Welcome to the Top 10 Gardener with Master Gardener, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and top 10 advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your garden host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of Northern Arizona. And we are into a, a, a lot of activity in the gardens right now. Right now, we're seeing a lot of pollinators, a lot of birds and migrations kind of back and forth. You're seeing different kinds of birds. You saw a golden eagle, not over my gardens, but as I'm driving home over a ridge line kind of stuff. Kind of cool to watch, big birds of prey. But I'm noticing a lot of different pollinators in my gardens, of course, we've had this generational buildup here. The birds came in, they had a roost, they had a, 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 some babies, and they had some more babies, and now there's like, there are birds everywhere. Bees can be the same way. Butterflies can be the same way. Hummingbirds can definitely be the same way. You have to start out with a few hummingbirds, and then there's more because they're hatching, they're getting more, they're, they're trying to get their strength up because they know that the migration is coming, and so they're trying to build up their strength of their wings and their body weight. It's a lot going on. I noticed that uh, in my own gardens, there's this beautiful black bumblebee. It's a bumblebee. It's a size. It's a larger bee, quite large, and it's on my... Uh, 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 what was it on sunflowers? It's on geraniums. It's on petunias. And it looks like a bumblebee without the, it kind of even has some stripes to it, but it's all black. And that is a cutter bee. It's related to a bumblebee. It is a bee. It's actually a pollinator. And it's the one that actually takes and puts a perfect kind of like dime sized hole in your foliage. What it's doing is it's, it's, it's harvesting the foliage and taking it back to the nest and they make, they use it in the hive. I, I actually think, uh, you entomologists, you kind of correct me on this, but I, I think they're making like foliage stew, some fungal stuff so they can feed their youngs. And there's all kinds of symbiotic thing that happens. They're a very beneficial bee out in, out, out in the gardens. They do leave some holes in the foliage. It used to bother me. Anymore, I kind of go, they're so cute. Look at him. He's so industrious. Look how perfect the circles are in my foliage. And I have more grace now. So I kind of go with them. Uh, their, their hives are quite small. Just a few dozen bees, or the ones that I've come across. Uh, bumblebees generally are smaller hives than, let's say, a honeybee. And something even smaller than that are mason bees. They're, they're real tiny. They're smaller than honeybees. Uh, they, they're, they're bigger than a fly, but smaller than a, than a honeybee. But they're tremendous pollinators. They actually will help your vegetable, your fruit trees. But they're kind of solitary bees. They go out there. I have a difficult time deciding or figuring out what kind of pollinator they are. I know honeybees and butterflies and hummingbirds, they get all the glory. They're the ones that, oh my gosh, that's the only pollinators in the yard. That is not true. There's almost as many, in fact, there's more varieties of flies, not house flies. We're talking different types of garden flies. Many of them look like bees. And the only way I can tell them a, a difference is a bee has a different kind of eye than a fly does. So if it looks like a bee with, with a fly eye, that is actually a fly. It's got a different kind of that, you know, it can see from every angle all the time, like a house fly eye on a bee. That's actually, a, they're pollinating, they're hovering. They're, they're, they're going from flower to flower, tremendous pollinators. And generally, they're loners. They don't come out in, in groups or force. You don't see like honeybees. You'll see a dozen of them on a, on a sage plant or a salvia. You'll see hummingbirds all over a mimosa or penstemons, these different groups. But these, these flies or solitary like mason bees are just loners. It's going to go out and do their own thing. And there's a lot of them everywhere, all, but they're, they're not congregated. They're not grouped together. And so there's a lot of activity kind of crescendos. It builds up through really the end of October. Uh, so it'll be glorious, lots of activity. And then sometime in October, the days will start getting shorter where there's some kind of trigger that goes off. A good trigger, not a bad trigger for uh, uh, the wildlife in your yard where they'll start hibernating or they'll start migrating. They'll start taking off. So your hummingbirds will be coming. They'll just be where they all go. 
There's a few always on those feeders, but you'll notice hmm, there's quite a few less or you'll see some different ones. So I encourage folks to keep those feeders, whether it's a hummingbird feeder or just a regular bird feeder, keep those this during this migration pattern. They are critically important. That's the most important time that you can take care of your gardens and your the, the wildlife in your yard because they're moving around. And so the hummingbirds and birds, just in birds in general, they're up north, they'll start traveling this way and they get tired and they need a place to rest. And if you've got a beautiful garden, you will notice an impressive number of different kinds of birds, different kinds of hummingbirds coming to your feeders and going, you're naming them. Oh, there's the whole Rufus. He's gone now. But we've got a different one coming through. And you'll see the personalities change around the, the feeders. It's kind of fun time. So keep those feeders up. They need you to help them get to where they're going as they as they migrate south at this point. And so we are on this, this central part, whether you're tuned in from Sedona or Camp Verde or uh, Paulden or, or Hillside, Kirkland, Skull Valley, Prescott Valley, it, we, all of us are on the migratory path because we've got the water source. So they're using, they're skipping from creek to creek, river to river, stock tank to stock tank, and they're looking for these, the, the, the pathway. And they've got this ancient trail that they just follow back and forth and it's programmed within there. I think their DNA just knows what to do as they migrate back and forth. Likewise, the youngsters, they're just too stupid to figure out it's time to go. And the old folks, they're just, they just ache and they just can't make it. They're just thinking about, oh, can I do it? one more time. And so if you can keep those feeders out for them as they figure out, can I make it or can I not? Am I smart enough? Can I take grandpa with me to go down south together? What do I do? So you'll see this interesting thing that happens. That's why your fall flowers are some of the most important, your echinaceas, your, um, gosh, there's whole uh, agastache. There's a whole series of, of autumn flowers. Mums, of course, get all the glory. But asters are right there, even a more important uh, flocks, a more important food source for the health. They're beautiful, but they also greatly enhance your wildlife's, the wild, you, you can help sustainability. We're all talking about cooling down the earth. You know, you know just think about your backyard and and the, 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 the pollinators that are in your own backyard. You can help those directly yourself with your plants and your gardens and your bird bath or your, you can help them out easily just with a, on a back patio of a condo. They'll find that and go, yeah, I'm just going to rest here on the, on the balcony for a bit and just kind of hang out. And they'll suck on the flowers for a little bit, maybe hang out for a day or two. And then off they go. Now, where'd they go? Well, there's, there's, they're, they're moving. They just needed to rest for a couple days, kind of take, check into the motel, kind of hang out for a couple days, get your feet underneath it and get your wings underneath it and take off again. So it's kind of a fun time. This is the decoration time. I think of autumn as a, as a time, it's a time to rest. The gardens are full. You're good. Yeah, I can accessorize with some pansies. They're in. Some mums, yeah. Some some fall ve winter vegetables, fall autumn vegetables. Yeah, that's good. But the bulk, I'm not like rototilling the entire garden. I'm not getting everything. Everything's going in. You're spot treating a few flowers back and forth. You're spot, you're filling in with a few extra vegetables, kind of take you through the end of the year. And you're accessorizing with some color to help the wildlife that's out there that's going through your gardens. So it's kind of such a pleasant thing. And so I wish it was just five degrees cooler. That'd be like perfect. Oh, although waterfall going to the backyard, the pond kind of floating around, sitting on the back deck, right at canopy level of the mimosas, watching the hummingbirds and bumblebees kind of pollinate all the flowers at the top of that tree and all the color and activity down to blow, below. It's kind of a delightful time. Autumn gardens are the best and you're by no means limited to, I, I can, I'm out of time. No, there's a whole series of plants that just love to be planted this time of year. And it starts with the number one, mums, but then aspens 
and then maples, and then there's butterfly bushes, all these others that can also go out in the gardens. We've got a lot in store for you. Lisa Waters Lane coming in with your garden questions right after this. Whether you're freshening up an existing landscape or starting with a blank slate, the Waters in-store garden consultation is right for anyone. If you don't know where to start, Waters Personal Shopper Service allows you to book one-on-one -on -one time with an expert without the crowds. It's easy by phone or through our website. No lines, no waiting. Purchase a $250 gift card from Waters and it comes with one-on-one -on -one private gardener time. You're going to love your yard again. Waters Garden Center in Prescott or watersgardencenter.com. You're listening to Garden Master Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join his daily podcast for timely garden advice seasonally right for the gardens. Ken can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott or through his website at top10gardener.com. 